This is D with Divine Needle, and welcome to the Age of Aquarius. <laughs> this is a reading for the new moon coming up on the 11th. It occurs at 1.06 p.m. Central Standard Time. And this is going to be a reading for that new moon. What the energies are going to be. Whew, and I just got the shitties. Start getting them towards the end of the Monday reading too. The Moon Day reading. They told me to hold these cards for this reading. <sighs> so I will. Um, I do want to take the opportunity to thank everybody that supports the channel. Uh, what you do for us is monumental in the mission that Nell and I are trying to do. It's a huge one. Multi-pronged, multi-faceted, and apparently really important. All of your missions are really important. But the support that you all give us is phenomenal, and I do want to express my gratitude. It means a lot to us. All right. So, the new moon in Aquarius. They gave me a time frame for when I needed to release the information on the other channel, and it was before this new moon, dealing with Book of Revelations. Let's see what they give us for this reading. Uh, the Moon Day reading was pretty profound. The overall energy is the tower, and the highest priority is the world card. Big reading. I bet this one is too. This the readings during this month particularly are going to be pretty fascinating. I have a feeling um, we have Valentine's Day coming up on the fourteenth, and some interesting energies going on for this new moon um, with the planetary alignments. Really interesting. All right. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's see what they have to tell us. Everybody down here on a mission needs to know what's going on. And we will do our best to provide as much information as possible because it's part of my mission. Whew. All right, new moon in Aquarius on the 11th. And off we go. New moon in the age of Aquarius, or in Aquarius, coming up February 11th. The Lotus Throne. <laughs> I do hope you took a look at the um, Moon Day reading. <laughs> Talks about the New World Order and Unseen Power Rising and um, its destiny about the dynasty <laughs> and <clears throat> successorship. The Lotus Throne, take a look at IPEC Goat, the ones that have been running things down here. When they see that Lotus Blossom pop up out of that apple, they get scared. 
and for good reason. Because Mama Bear doesn't like it when people are mean to her babies. The Lotus Throne. Indeed. <laughs> New Moon in Aquarius. It takes courage to trust your inner light, to ascend the throne of your own inner spiritual authority, especially if the light of others around you seems more powerful than your own at times. You are being asked to trust the light within, above all. Have faith in your own heart. Know that the divine dwells within, is with you always. That's profound. I knew this reading was going to be, and it's starting out with a bang. And the shiver me timbers. <laughs> yeah. All right. For the new moon. <clears throat> Morning throat, allergy throat, yeehaw. It's all about our genetics and, yeah, why we're allergic to everything down here. <laughs> <coughs> all right, let's see if that helps. Sorry about coughing in your ear. <sighs> here we go. New moon, February 11th, please. New moon, February 11th. New Moon, February 11th. <sighs> that one's dancing. <sighs> A grand symphony. And I am... <laughs> yeah. The grand symphony. Key, <laughs> Key 27. <laughs> 72 pairs. <clears throat> Man. Uh, 27. That's what I've always said on my other channel. I'm eternally 27. The real me. The one up above. Oh, it's interesting at the bottom of the deck. <clears throat> Key six. It is what it is. And it feels like a portal through a doorway. It's interesting because I did a reading and it showed the four wands with a red door in the middle. I'm going to leave that there. A grand symphony. Oh, okay. Let's take a look at the book. Because I think it'll be interesting to hear additional thoughts on this. <laughs> this is everything playing out as it should on the holodeck. And I've got something in the view of my camera here. I'll have to fix that, but we'll do that later. Everything happens for a reason, right? It's a grand symphony, the holodeck. How it was designed. And everything's playing out exactly as it's supposed to be, regardless of the efforts of the negative ones, the dark ones trying to stop the Lotus Throne. <clears throat> 27. Inclusive, inclusivity, 
being part of the whole, removing bias, seeing the interconnectedness of us all, knowing that everything you do has a consequence, unity consciousness, the end of division. <laughs> That's part of the mission, bringing an end to the division. Because those dark ones have been trying to divide everybody by race, religion, sex, you name it. They do their best to divide. Not anymore. No, no, no. We're not having it. Mama says it's going to stop. As human beings, we have a tendency to see ourselves as separate from others. This perception is the root of the cosmic joke played on us all. Although our five senses and intellect can help us manage our experiences in the material world, and intuition helps us navigate the invisible, we still struggle with the issue of identity and how we fit into the whole. You're facing a paradox today. Wow. That's probably that tower <laughs> that's in the moon day reading. Ah, but this is for the new moon on the 11th. There's going to be a paradox. You need to focus on being your unique self for only you can bring your own special harmony to the symphony of the world. Interesting, because the world card was highest priority for today. But equally, you need to learn to be selfless and put we before me, seeing yourself as part of the consciousness that unifies us all. You're being invited to step back and see the bigger picture until your individual part on the world stage disappears and blends with the glory of all life. It's true that who you are and what you do counts in far-reaching ways. Consider this, though. When you listen to music, it's the whole, not any single note on its own that makes the song come alive. So today, ask yourself, can you be a part of something bigger? Can you put the principles and needs of the group above your own wants? Can you fully embrace the concept of unity and diversity by celebrating all the notes in the symphony? If so, then you will indeed be wise, and whatever you are dreaming about will be fulfilled beyond your wildest hopes. It's time to do your part to sing in harmony with others. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. <laughs> Rustling around was doing some of his own harmony, his own coming up out of his heart space, singing. And when I watched that video, I sang along in unison with him. We all need to sing in unison. Everybody that's down here on missions, we're all connected in one way or another, in very freakish ways, I might add. And we all need to start singing together, and not separately. Egos aside, everyone. Egos aside. Even me. <laughs> it's time to make a grand symphony. Mm-hmm. Usher in the New World Order. Goddess style. <laughs> Stay in tune and learn the new harmonies and notes. S such sweetness will arise. <laughs> I do love these readings. They make me giggle. It is what it is, number six. I'm going to read that one because, <laughs> yeah, that saying is very profound in its own right. <laughs> Key concepts is radical acceptance, engaging 
life on life's terms, observing circumstances and taking them at face value, recognizing and releasing resistance and denial. What happens when you look at the world? Can you see it exactly as it is or only as you assume it to be? A door closing isn't an invitation to take a battering ram to it. What if there were another door to lead you to your destiny? That's interesting because the Moon Day reading has the Wheel of Fortune destiny and the Ten of Pentacles, which is the dynasty. If you can release your attachment to getting what you want, you'll be surprised by how much energy you have for more important things. <laughs> Liberated from the burden of yearning, you'll have access to what is best for all. Can you try now to accept things as they are and shift your focus and attention until that other door opens up for you? Radically accept life on life's terms when you stop fighting against it and instead fight for what you truly desire More of the world becomes available to you When you are no longer in denial about what is in front of you You will be empowered to make necessary changes with respect to yourself your attitude and your choices the irony is that real transformation can happen once you surrender to the idea that things are exactly as they are meant to be. Yep, the Grand Symphony playing out. Everything is as it should be. If you step back with clarity and acceptance, you will realize that life is offering you something magical. Even a circumstance circumstances send you on a temporary detour which the tower <laughs> was in today's reading as overall energy you will discover treasure beyond your imagination and a new way to embrace the world keep this prayer in mind god grant me the serenity to accept the things i cannot change the courage to change the things i can and the wisdom to know the difference. Hmm. That's pretty profound. Hmm. Now I know why they wanted me to read from the book. <laughs> All right. New Moon. February 11th reading. Oh. Woo. Yep. Overall energy for February 11th, New Moon. Overall energy for February 11th, New Moon. Everybody down here on missions needs a heads up, please. FYI. Overall energy for February 11th. Overall energy for February 11th. Alrighty. Overall, Archangel of Glory, that is the King of Scepters. The Sharpshooter, Fast Incoming Messages, Energy, The Contender, Five of Scepters, Internal Outer, or Outer, usually Outer Struggle, because this is Scepters. The Internal Struggle is the f Swords. And the, <laughs> the door. See the door back there? This is the Four Scepters card, the Demi Urge. See the door back there in my other new deck? That's a red door on that Four Scepters, and we have that door there. The message couldn't be clearer <laughs> when it comes to the doors. And I'm going to move these up so we have room for our reading. Wow. Mm. All right. <clears throat> What's the highest priority for February 11th? New moon. 
highest priority for February 11th, new moon. <sighs> February 11th, new moon, highest priority. And what do we need to be mindful of or prepare for? February 11th. February 11th. Mindful of, prepare for. resistance going on here with the cards. What do we need to be mindful of to prepare for February 11th? New moon. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And there's the swords. <laughs> Husband's in here. He just got up. Hey, you want it? The Earth Goddess. Seven of Orbs on the bottom. <sighs> the Hector and the Joyous One. Ten of Cups. Venus in Aquarius. Yep, she is. <clears throat> she is in Aquarius. Mercury in Sagittarius. Saturn in Leo. Venus in Aries. Scorpio card. Heart of Aries, Archangel of Glory. Okay, let's see what they got <clears throat> for us. Underlying energy. Oh, there we go with the Knight of Flame. Lightning will pry right under that. The Gardener, Seven of Orbs. The Earth. God is playing in the garden, planting the seeds for the future. Seven of Orbs. The gardener is the nature spirit of low magic and the spirit of harvest. When the gardener appears, close by is the presence of an earth goddess. The Seven of Orbs card is a threshold, a special nexus point between the physical realm and the spirit realm. The gardener calls to mind the Magna Mater, the goddess Sybil, and she appears to you now to help you take what is formless matter within your mind and spirit to yield meritous work product and a presentment of harvest. The gardener is also a spirit who oversees low magic and can be called upon to assist with the craft, utilizing herbs, stones, roots, oils, and the crafting of charms. The gardener appears to you when you are experiencing success unfulfilled. The seven of orbs is a liminal gateway between states of consciousness. When the gardener appears to you, know that you've got an idea, a design, or concept worth investing in. And if you see it through to fruition, you will achieve the security, stability, and material abundance you've been seeking. Overall energy is this pile, starting with the Archangel of Glory, that is the King of Scepters, Angel of Art and Grace. The 
The King of Scepters is the Archangel of Glory who holds up the torch, beckoning you to pursue greater scholarship or cultivation of the arts. The Archangel of Glory is a divine teacher of the arts in all forms of academia. This is angel now by your side to facilitate success in artistic, literary, academic, or scholarly endeavors. Appearing to you as a spirit guide for career success. Ignis Aron Probat. Fire test gold. Possibly an Aries. Sending you fast incoming messages. The sharpshooter is pointing at the reaper. Take note. Eight of scepters. Swift movement abounds around you. This is the spirit of marksmanship. When the Eight of Scepters appears, it bears notice to pay attention to the messages being directed you, at you coming from your world. For spirit is presenting itself through the words of those speaking to you. And that does happen. The Eight of Scepters is the spirit of inbound tidings that bear your name. When the sharpshooter appears in a tarot spread, pay attention to what she is aiming or shooting at in context to the landscape spread. The spread's landscape, sorry. What she points at is what spirit is directing you to pay your attention to. The sharpshooter might be appearing to you as a protege of Anat, an old Canaanite, Canaanite maiden goddess of war. She also might be a messenger from Artemis. Perhaps she is the priestess daughter of Minerva or Pallas Athena. By the way, Pallas Athena is in Aquarius too right now. FYI. The sharpshooter in the Eight of Scepters is the spirit oft called upon to be an emissary into our world to deliver messages from a divine feminine embodying courage, wisdom, military strategy, war, and battles, or a patron goddess of the arts. When the sharpshooter appears to you, such a divine consciousness is calling to you. So, likely fire sign, likely Aries, sending messages. The contender, five of scepters. The outer struggles, right? The contender is the spirit of a zero-sum game. This is the spirit appearing before you when you face competition. This is the battle, the contention you fight for domination. This is the spirit who helps you through a rivalry for supremacy. There is strife in your world, and the contender is a spirit here to help you navigate that strife. And the Demiurge, Four Scepters. Yeah, interesting. This is about our foundation, what we build. Four of Scepters. The Demiurge builds our physical platform of success. This is the attending spirit who guides your intangible idea into a tangible work product through the material world. The Demiurge marks progress, achievement attained, and is the spirit presence with you through a momentous rite of passage. The Demiurge is the spirit to help you call from the spiritual or intellectual plane and bring perfected work into form on the physical plane. Okay, so that's the overall energy for February 11th. Highest priority, key 13, the Reaper, passage to initiation. Major Arcana. Lucium Sycamore, follow the light. You're being guided through an initiation phase and the suffering you experience serves a greater divine purpose. 
A change that you know in your heart is imminent, but have been denying is the change that you will face. The reaper appears to you when the circumstances you face call for a gentle reminder. All is not fair to the human perception. You toil for the bread of life until sweat seethes from your brow, and yet that life will be taken away, no matter who you are or what you have done. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That is the purpose and the absence of purpose to human genesis. Endure through the difficult changes to come, and when those winds of change have settled, you will find yourself better for it. There will be a rebirth after this death. So big transformation energy. And still, for some reason, this card, the little ship sailing out in the background, is catching my eye. And what to be mindful of, prepare for. Five of Swords, the Hector, the Take No Prisoners card. <laughs> That's the way I see that card. That's the Take No Prisoners card. Mm -hmm. Wow. And that is in the intellectual plane, it's Swords. It's all about truth and clarity, right? Hector was the greatest warrior of ancient Troy, and through that namesake, the Hector is the spirit of indomitable strength. But, but is it indomitable strength at any cost? The Five of Swords marks the defeat of your opponents by unfair advantage. The Five of Swords denotes an imbalance of power in the situation at hand. Heed also, the Hector is the spirit of that which, upon first impression, is predicted by all to be victorious. But who will end in defeat if you do not learn the important lessons? The Hector is here trying to impart to you. Indomitable strength does not come from lording your power over others. It comes from using your charisma to sway others. And the joyous one. Ten of chalices. So advice in the what to be mindful of, prepare for. Very nice. The joyous one, ten of chalices, is happiness we have earned. This is prognostication of spiritual fulfillment. Creativity becomes productivity, and productivity leads you on a directed path toward contentment. The glyph etched upon the large chalice in the foreground is the emblem of the Holy Womb, the Hagia Sophia, or Holy Wisdom. The ten of chalices appearing before you signifies the appearance of God the Mother. The rainbow across the heavens is an omen, perpetual success. That's also the rainbow bridge. The joyous one, in other words, she is the bridge. The joyous one is an omen of fertility, and that which was in the figurative womb shall mature and ripen into a great spiritual and emotional reward for you. When this spirit appears before you, it reflects back for you to see how along your path you have developed your wisdom, your intelligence, and your agape love. The Ten of Chalices is an affirmation that your learned skills, intellect, and acumen have matured. The Joyous One is the personification of wisdom attained. When this card appears for you, it's an affirmation from the Holy Spirit of your spiritual maturation. <clears throat> the card can also appear to remind you that you are complete, that your life and world is perfected and harmonious, as it is right now. <laughs> The Grand Symphony. It is not... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> wow. Mm. It is not necessary for you to pine for more. Bask in the blessings that you've been given. And I guess I'm done because I can't speak. <laughs> My voice. Yeah. 
it doesn't like the fact that I was going hard yesterday trying to put back the pieces of the puzzle together for the videos I did. So this is the energy for that new moon. I hope this helps those of you down here on missions along your path. Quick incoming messages from a fire sign about some contention dealing with your foundation. Big transformation energy is your highest priority. And don't be the Hector. It's not winner takes all right now. Need to stay in perfected, harmonious joy. Yep. All right. Have a good one. This was for February 11th, the energy of the new moon in Aquarius. And if you look at the astrology for that, wowza. <laughs> anyway, take care, all of you, till the next reading.